I'm back with, you know, another another project. Switching gears again. Uh, actually, it's not even a project because this one's finished. But I sort of touched on this just a little bit in another video. And I figured I would just go ahead and give it its own, its own spotlight. Because I'm pretty proud of this one. Because this one took some real finesse to finish. Uh, this is, obviously, it's a vulture. It's an Astra Militarum. I hate saying that. It's an Imperial Guard vulture. But this was built from the older... Forge World all resin set. Now they've got that mixed uh, resin and plastic Valkyrie set that comes out, and it's just it's a lot better. Even the resin pieces are better. Um, it fits better. It's got better features, uh, you know, around the cockpit area and everything. Um, this one is the older set that comes in the cardboard box, um, and everything in it is resin. Um, it's a pain in the butt. So, and, and this was early on in my learning to do Warhammer models um, kind of life, too. So, it's not perfect, um, but I'm pretty proud of a lot of the detailing and weathering because this also kind of calls back to my sort of, what should I call it, my, you know, where I started and came from in model building, which is, you know, actual skill aircraft. Um, I put a lot of that knowledge and skill into this. Um, to do a lot of, you know, the, the weathering and the painting and the, uh, you know, just my basis in actual combat aircraft uh, knowledge and everything there. So I really like this one. Um, I, I'm probably looking to sell this particular one, though, because it just doesn't fit in with the rest of my army right now. Uh, and I, you know, I have a couple new ones that I want to build, but... It's really well finished. I mean, it's really well done. I'm re I really like it, and I had to do some custom modifications to it and everything, and I just kind of want to show it off. So, uh, to start with, weapons. So it came with the standard. Um, we've got our LAS cannons, you know, and these are totally detailed out. Um, I just I had a really great time doing them. And everything's magnetized on this, by the way. So, you know, of course, everything... I've seen some people where, like, they paint one one way and then another one another way, and, like, why are you doing that? Um, but... So the LAS cannons are, are really detailed um, and weathered up. One for each side, of course. We've got our rocket pods, which, again, uh, very simply done, but weathered and just ready to go on each side. And, you know, in the rules, these things can carry hunter-killer missiles, and I've always, I've always, I've always seen it, you know, that they have it, but they don't have hunter-killer missiles for these things specifically. So I, I just got some hunter-killer missiles from eBay, and I decided to, and this is all kind of scratch-built, so I, I took some pieces, I took some hunter-killer missile rails, the ones I liked, I took some stock plastic, um, and I took some actual brackets from a Valkyrie model, and I made hunter-killer missiles for these things to carry. And they're all, everything's magnetized. The missiles are magnetized, the launcher's magnetized, so you can take the missiles off, and the launcher's there, so, you know, in-game, as you fire them, you can take them off one by one, and you can just leave this, you know, stacked under the wing. So like I said, I magnetized everything. Uh, I, you know, I didn't, I originally didn't start off magnetizing stuff. Um, it wasn't something I did regularly until a couple friends showed me how versatile it is to start magnetizing. So basically, you know, this guy's always going to carry his LAS cannons, I guess. But then the Hunter Killer Missile launcher racks are really simple to put on there. And I will admit the way I put them together, uh, they're prone to falling off as you put them on, unless you're really careful. But then in-game, you know, you just take them off as they fire, um, and they go back on pretty easy. And I think they look pretty cool under the wing. You know, that, that looks like a natural carry for 100 killer missiles. And I don't know if there's a weapon load that lets you do that. I mean, I don't know how the game really feels about it, but if you wanted to, you could put your rocket pods and your 100 killer missiles on all together and have that. So, uh... Very nicely, you know, magnetized loadout for everything on there. So, yay. One of the interesting things, and I don't know if this was just... I bought this kit secondhand on eBay. It was not put together. It was all pieces in the box, but it had no um, bracket to, to put the stand in at all. And if you look at the new Forge World kit, you can see that that is built 
right into this resin fuselage piece right there. This wasn't, it, it just, it had nothing. So, you know, I didn't have another kit to work off of. I, I had built one of these before, so I, I wasn't even really sure exactly. I looked for pictures online to find the kind of rough placement of where it went. I wasn't sure where the stand was supposed to fit. Um, so in order to get it to fit on the stand, though, I kind of had to scratch build a mount for it. And <clears throat> to be honest, I tried to, I tried to just mill this out uh, into the bottom of the resin. And you know what? My, my milling skills with the Dremel were not that great at that time. So what I ended up doing was I, um, I cast one of the pieces from a Valkyrie, the plastic piece, with uh, just some standard, you know, casting putty. And then I used Alumalite to make the actual piece. And then I stuck it on the bottom. Um, now you can see it's a little bit more forward on mine than it would be on the standard. But then I just had this big square piece sticking on there. So then I used some scratch building, uh, some plastic, and then some filler. And then I found just some spare pieces from various kits and parts to go on the side and everything to build it out. So it really does, in my opinion, it looks very natural. This is a stock plastic rod and uh, different pieces. And then I, I can't remember exactly. I think these come from Valkyrie parts over there. And then, you know, some more stock plastic on the side and... This is all just built from plastic and then sanded and puttied um, to kind of give it an aerodynamic look. So I just built up this whole mount for the stand um, and it works. I mean, it gives it a, a very decent kind of, you know, slight nose down angle when it's in there. Uh, it, the all resin model is pretty heavy. So I just wanted to make sure that it sat in there nicely and would would work out so that's cool so that makes this one kind of unique too because you're never going to find another one of these with that exact profile on it and if i do say so myself just it looks like it came that way i mean you never know unless you really scrutinized it that there was anything different about this specific uh, kit with anything else so cool so for the overall paint job i decided to go with the russian su-34 Kind of earlier scheme now they, they rock this sort of eggplant purplish gray overall scheme but i always loved that kind of three-tone bluish green scheme that the c34 wore for a long time and uh i can't remember the actual paint set i used but i will uh throw in a picture of it here great acrylic paint set you know i airbrushed it directly didn't have to thin it down or anything um, so standard um, black primer and then just airbrushed it on didn't um, have to cut it with white or anything didn't have to thin it down or anything uh, and I just freehanded the, the paint scheme so light blue all across the bottom and then the three color on the upper surfaces and side just kind of looked at a Su-34 as I was going for reference and inspiration and and went with it and it worked out pretty well I think the colors look just really well, especially, you know, if you think about it, Su-34 is a dedicated uh, attack, ground attack aircraft, and, and that's exactly what the Vulture is. So I think the colors work really, really well on the Vulture, and it just gives it, I don't know, just a, a nice kind of mean, that's a camouflaged attack plane look, you know. When it came to the engine, I don't think there is a brand of metallic paint I did not use on there. Model Master, uh, Vallejo, Tamiya, Humbrol, um, Games Workshop, Citadel Paints. I mean, everything went into that. Everything went into that. Uh, you know, with every paint technique I, I know, just to make sure that everything stood out. Uh, one regret I have... I used kind of a, a bluish titanium on there for some of it, and it sort of blends into the camouflage scheme. I didn't mean for it to do that. I just wanted to use that blue titanium paint, but I really wanted to cut out a lot of the different engine parts just to make it look as complicated as a real engine gets with the different hoses and different couplings and pieces here and there, um, especially over there with dry brushing, some of those parts on top, and then the turkey feathers, big old turkey feathers, but turkey feathers on the exhaust, and then some more of that blue titanium inside. Uh, and I think that came out really, really well. 
lots of just just picking out details like i said on on the underside different hoses and connections and different pieces in primer colors um, different metallic colors just going to work just to give it just to make those pieces stand out from from the background you know kind of standard work around the bolter in the nose As for weathering, you know, standard uh, panel line, so pre-shading and then actual panel line washes. And then in some areas, just a little bit of airbrush overspray just to make some of the panel lines stand out. And then dry brushing with various metallics um, with actually some, some lead pencil along some lines just to make some of the darker lines stand out. Uh, some more uh, picking out with some lighter metallics just to show some real wear over there and uh, you know of course around bolts some washes and stuff you see some heavier washes up front where people's eyes are you know likely to be drawn and uh, tried to mimic the black canopy framing now the canopy was a whole different issue. So if you're familiar with this all resin kit, it gives you some extremely thin resin canopy frames that don't really fit very well. And then uh, some uh, thin acetate sheet that you have to cut to shape. And that was just a pain. And it really was, was I thought, not worth the effort. Um, as a side note, I noticed a lot of people when they build their, their Valkyries and stuff, rather than detailing the insides and, and everything, they just sort of paint the, the canopies. Like, I'm wondering why. It's just a question. Why? Why not with all the, the detail that you can do? And I know you can't really see on the video, but I've got some Mike Grant uh, gauge decals inside the, the instrument panels and everything. And, you know, you've got some nice figures and everything. Why not paint that detail in there? Why, why just overpaint the, the canopy? Why do that? Anyway, um, I, I went on eBay and I bought some actual Valkyrie plastic canopies. And then I just had to file down the bottom of the cockpit tub to make it sink down a little bit more and there's some plastic strip you really can't see it I mean that's good you can't see it but uh, to fill some space in between these two canopy sections and there's a lot of work went into fitting these but it was a lot easier to put the plastic um, canopy glass and then the plastic canopy rails the kind that would come in a modern Valkyrie kit rather than the really super thin resin and the acetate sheet to get it to fit but I think it has a much nicer look to it and it was overall just to I mean a lot of work to get it to fit but a lot less work than to try to cut that acetate sheet and to hope that those super thin resin canopy rails didn't break and all that stuff and then of course painted it black like like the Su-34 cockpit is black um, but just like the detailing on this I think is what really brings it to life uh, and makes it stand out as a credible this aircraft could be out there uh, decals are basically are rated my spares so like for example you see a lot of these they come from a combination of 148 f-15 and f-4 phantom kits yes there are uh, plenty of decals that come from games workshop kits uh, but uh, these are custom printed these are actually um, I looked for a couple different, a sword, and then, you know, some winged skulls. Uh, <coughs> this, of course, is, uh, well, we know what that is. That's Games Workshop. But uh, these are all uh, F4 Phantom decals, you know, some realistic modern aircraft decals. Just sort of, again, bring it to life a little bit. This is custom printed. Um, let's see if I can get a good shot of it there. The name of this particular aircraft is Among Vultures. Uh, I just, I wanted it to really stand out and, and look like it could be an actual aircraft serving on the line somewhere that's seen a lot of action and a lot of combat. So I'm pretty proud of it. I mean, this is, you know, I've been building scale model aircraft and armor for years. So I've got my detailing and my weathering down pretty well, I think. And, you know, it applies just as well to these models as to any others. I went for, you know, just kind of a, a busy base um, just flying over some some swamplands uh, venturing into you know some watery territory 
lots of tall grass, lots of rocks. These are real rocks that I just, you know, collected outside. Um, mud, gravel, uh, you know, model railroad grass and everything just, just stuck on there. And it is, it is busy, but I wanted it to be busy on purpose so that there's a lot going on and it just sort of, there's so much that it just kind of, you don't want to look at the base too much. You're like, wow, that's a lot going on. You're drawn upwards. You want to look at the plane itself. I've seen some really great base designs. Like people really put a lot of work into the base and they look beautiful, but I, I want people looking at the plane, not so much the base, you know? Like that's, that's where the model is. But anyway, really this video is just to kind of show off the techniques and the construction and i am proud that the old all resin kit finally came together into something that i think is is really well i would display this on a shelf next to any of my actual scale model kits um you know any of the big names any of the modern combat aircraft that i build so so in the next couple videos you will see some more work on the storm blade conversion and the completion of the crazy modified lehman russ and those two Toroxes, I got all that stuff coming up and then some more. So um, thanks for watching and uh, you'll see me again soon.